just, I keep moving, that'll give your shoulders a workout, won't it? Cameraman workout, cameraman workout. <laughs> What's up guys, I'm Lex and welcome to the video that you guys have requested and that is weightlifting with a twist beyond bodybuilding and today we're going to take you through how I go about doing that and still maintaining my bodybuild style weight sessions whilst also encompassing that whole functional style training that comes with high intensity boxing or back work. What we're talking about is integration of something outside of just picking a weight up and moving it from A to B. We're talking more about the cardiovascular and functional side of training that we should all be paying attention to. It's not only about looking good, it's about literally being healthier and being a better athlete. One thing I want to say to you all is never ever don't try something because you're scared of losing muscle. The myth of muscle loss through cardio has been disproven so many times. The simple approach is if you are doing more you can eat more. If you just subsidize your diet with more calories to compensate for the extra work, no muscle will be lost. If anything, you might gain better muscle and better detail from attacking your body from so many new angles and making it work under a stress it is not used to. That's only gonna benefit you in the long run. Let's take a quick look at the kit that you're gonna need for the simple basic setup to be able to jump straight in and add some bag work into your routine. And all of this will come in at the current time in the sales, I found all this for under 100 pounds. So if you're gonna be hitting some bags and doing some work, you're gonna need to protect those hands. So first off, the gloves. The ones that I've opted for are the Venom Elites. These are 12 ounce. This is a versatile weight range to utilize as you'll be able to take this to do some light sparring as well as work on the bag without the shoulders burning out too quickly. To go alongside your gloves, it's always a wise idea to have some hand wraps to protect those knuckles. These are the ones that I've gone for and they're the RDX simple pull on wraps. They're just a little quicker to use for everyday purposes. Nice and cheap and cheerful. So with the hands covered, next up we need to look at your feet. These are the Lonsdale boxing boots and they only cost 30 pounds. These are 100% my bargain of the day top tip. In five years, these are only the second pair of these that I've had to buy. Massive bang for your buck. Doing it with the wrong gloves and the wrong footwear is like running in the wrong footwear. It's just gonna feel horrible and it's not gonna allow you to progress. But here's some extra added additions that you can add on to your kit should you want to. The number one addition that I would add would be compression wear. So I'm rocking the Gymshark Flex leggings. These are around about 25 pounds at the moment, but they retail at 32 as a standard RRP. Great thing about compression wear is it literally keeps the heat in the joints. Helping your body stay warm and keeping the joints nice and supple is vitally important. Also with that sweat wicking material, you're also able to keep going for longer without getting uncomfortable and being seamless, you're not gonna get any nasty rashes. If you're up to for some bigger gloves with a little bit of room in there, these are also really cool and these are some RDX gel hand wraps. The great thing about these is they offer maximum knuckle support and comfort, but they also have some really good wrist wraps on there, so it's gonna help strengthen your wrists. If you have some weak wrists, so you tend to tweak them on the bag, these are one of my top tips. They're pretty cheap and cheerful and easily available. This is a bit of a niche one and some of you might not even know that it exists, and that is the patella strap. Actually really easily able to get hold of. They're available pretty much anywhere online. They're very cheap, but what they do is they offer stabilization to the knees. So if you have any issues with like sore knees and things like that from doing functional movements, these are offer some real support for lateral and dynamic movements and they can also be used on your weight training days to help support the knees. Last but not least, this is one that isn't really designed for the bag work but a lot of you ask me when I use them and they're good just to have in your gym bag and that is some Bluetooth Sony headphones. They're one of the best ones that I've used so far. They're around about 50 pounds so you can probably pick them up cheaper now. They've been in my gym bag for well over a year now. They take a kick in and keep on ticking. So today we're going to be looking at a complete workout of heavy and light bag work plus arms and back. Let's talk about the basics of how I go about this. Think about what you would do if you were going to do cutting or you were just trying to get a little bit of weight off at the gym or maybe it's just part of your routine as a warm up. You do cardio before your weights. This is no different. This is just more like a functional cardio. Yes, it's gonna test you, but obviously you're gonna only push it to the level of your ability. And then how hard you go with it is completely up to you. Today we're gonna to cover two different styles of functional work that I utilize using two different bags. We're gonna be using a heavy bag and we're gonna be using one of these lighter hanging bags. Now, if you don't have one of these, which some gyms don't have, what they might have is one like this. A long bag, a big bag, but this is not a heavy bag. This is quite soft 
it doesn't hurt to kick it and it has a lot of swing and movement in it. Whereas the heavier bags tend to sit a lot more still and when you land against them, they don't tend to bug. So you have to be a little bit more careful with the heavy bags than you do on the lighter bags because they're gonna offer a lot more resistance on impact. Now before we start, I want to say this isn't a boxing video. I'm not a professional boxer. Uh, I have studied and fought in MMA, but I come from a mixture of everything. Should you want to do boxing specifically or tie boxing specifically, I would recommend going to a class and learning the specific methodologies for those disciplines. Uh, but here, all we want is energy technique that is going to reduce your risk of injury and maximize your potential gains from the work that you are putting in. So if you have any keyboard concerns, you can shine them up real nice. Turn them sideways and stick them straight up your candy ass. If you smell what the rock is cooking. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the bag work. I'm going to be doing a full routine on that. I'm going to be doing my eight three minute rounds, 30 seconds rest. Then I'm going to go in and do back with superset arms. Now, I wouldn't be training shoulders on the same day that I do bag. You should find that your energy levels for the weights, they're short term. The bag work, that's more going into the long term energy stores. So we're working cardiovascular and then we should be able to sit, recover, maybe bring a snack in, bring some fast acting carbs, and then you'll be able to go straight into your weights and you'll be shocked at how good you still are at being able to get through some high volume weight training. What if you're powerlifting? If you're powerlifting, obviously that is a very stringent routine and program you have to be set to. So come in and do your numbers first. Get those heavy lifts out of the way. It's a short term energy play. It's a lot of effort, but it is short term. You will find once you've hit your numbers and done that workout, if you can sit, take a break, you'll then be able to come in and do the bag work afterwards. Like any cardiovascular workout, it doesn't matter really when you do it, as long as you're getting it in, you're still gonna get the benefits from it. You just want to maximize the structure that allows you to work at your best. So, power lifters, I would advise after, but if you're doing bodybuilding, isolation work, higher volume work, then we're definitely, definitely able to get this bag work in prior to lifting the weights. It's really, really simple. All you need is a little app called Round Timer. Literally, it's just called Round Timer. Go on the App Store and search it, you'll find it. Round Timer. On here, it allows you to set your rest times, your round time, and the number of rounds that you want to do. I've built myself up to doing eight three-minute rounds, so that's three minutes of work, and then 30 seconds rest between rounds. That's around about 30 minutes total time, 24 minutes working time. I would say to start with, start with three-minute rounds with one minute's rest. Then reduce the rest down and keep the round times the same. So with the round time sorted out, the next thing to look at is the style of work on the bags. We're gonna take a look at the heavy bag first. Heavy bag is anything that when you hit it, offers a lot of resistance. They're usually pretty wide. On the thinner bags, you're able to slip around the sides of the bag and come up from different angles, which is why on the heavy bag, what we want to work on is one, two power shots, and then when we move on to the other bag, which is the lighter bag, we're gonna concentrate more on speed and constant movement. Now we're just gonna cover a little bit of quick technique on here, just to make sure that you guys have a good starting point and foundation. There is another video on my channel more dedicated to specific technique, so I'll link that in the description below. Make sure to check that out and it'll cover a little bit more of just specific bag work. So all I'm gonna cover today is just a couple of quick things that are very important. Whenever you're on the bag, whenever you're punching, what we want to maintain is a good rotation with the body. So when you're hitting the bag, you want to be a decent distance away. A lot of people have a tendency to be very close to the bag and they end up throwing short punches here and really stunted movements. One of the jobs you're gonna have to do is to make sure that you're almost just a little bit under arm's length away from the bag at most times. Now, by nature, you're gonna come in uh, during some of the combinations and that's at the point where you're just gonna uh, finish the combination, if you're close in, then take a step back out and then reset back to that start position. When you throw a punch, whether it's a straight shot or a hook, it needs to come from the hips. What we're looking for is planted feet and we're gonna rotate the punch through, a lot like a golf swing. As the left hand comes forward, the hips rotate, shoulders roll back, and the leading arm will come through and that pops the jab. And now the body's set up for a right hand to come through, at which point the left hand returns and that lands, this comes back to protect the head. So we're getting a nice rotation here. We're working back, triceps, and our core and abs. Keep your feet planted. Try not to have happy feet. The power comes from driving through. So if you're jumping up and down while throwing the punch, number one, you're increasing the risk of injury. Number two, you're not gonna maximize your balance or punch power. Not the end of the world, but a massive habit that you want to get out of your system as quickly as possible is what we call windmilling. And that's the tendency of, and this is gonna be a natural tendency, is to throw a punch, and then once it's landed, it's to drop it and bring it back down by the waist 
and then bring it back up before using it again. We want to start returning the hand to where it came from. So when we throw the punch, once it's landed and the other one goes, we bring that back to the face and the other punch goes out. The best thing to do with this is imagine that you're wearing a pair of mittens that have a string connecting one glove to the other. Thus, if I push one out, the other one is pulled in. So you imagine that string pulls on one as the other leads. So I think the final tip that we'll go through today on this is just where to hit on the bag. We want to start getting in the habit of throwing our punches at head height. So what you want to do is pick a point on the bag and continually aim to kind of hit at that level. As people get tired, they tend to punch around about the chest area because obviously they're dropping the shoulders and the hands are coming down. Make sure that you're punching out at face height and pick a target on the bag to keep striking at. If you want to change levels and throw from head to the body, what we want to be looking to do is throw to the head and then drop the entire body at the knees. You're gonna drop the knees down to then throw at that body level. What I don't want to be doing is throwing a punch at the head and then throwing the body shot from a full upright standing position and throwing down here. I mean, obviously in a, in a fight, that's completely possible and completely utilizable, but what we want to maximize is level changing. We're trying to develop good habits here, and a lot of time what we're going to do is we're going to over-exaggerate movements to ingrain them into our own memory and get that motor pathway working. So you go jab, drop, body, up, or you could go jab, body, roll, and then back up to the top. And it's often quite a nice, simple way to make it flow is to do two shots on the same side. So if I'm gonna hook to the left body, once I've hooked to the left body, I can then come back up and hook to the head. But obviously once you get more comfortable, start throwing around, mixing up combinations, high, low, low, high. You can even start at the body and then come back up. So now a quick look at how to use the heavy bag compared to the hanging or lighter bags. So heavy bag, here we're looking at combinations with the odd power punches thrown in there. What a lot of people have a problem with doing is they come on the heavy bag and they just start swinging for the fences. That's not what it's about. We want to build up combinations, we want to build up technique, and we want to throw a heavy shot in every now and again, because the heavier shots are obviously gonna be more taxing, especially when we start adding in kicks and things like that. Today, we're just gonna concentrate on punches and we'll move on to kicks in later videos. But for this, simple combinations, and I'll go through three of them now. Combination one, jab, jab, straight right. Combination two, left hook, straight right, left hook, straight right. Combination three, jab, straight right, change levels, left body, left head, straight right. Try to remain relaxed. You're not gonna be able to do this straight off the bat, but if you keep telling yourself to do it over time, you will get better. I can either tear it in with, with anger and wrath. And it looks good, it sounds good, but whew, takes a breath out here because it's tensing up all the muscles. What we want to do is try and get relaxed and only throw with momentum and power rather than kind of tensed up muscular anger and power. Rolling the hips through every punch and then we can generate a very similar power but without all that muscle tension and excess fatigue. And here you'll see no no ra, no but Same power, a lot less energy. So to keep it nice and varied using the hanging bag or if you don't have one of these, the lighter bag, take all the power out and go much more for longer combinations, combination build-ups, speed and movement. We're looking to be constantly moving around the bag, changing levels, and then throwing some nice light combinations all the time, thinking about what you're doing before you do it. So we can roll combinations from one into the other. You've got combination one, two, and three for on the main bag. For on this bag, combinations one and two will flow very well. Combination one, jab, jab, throw, will then flow into combination two of left, right, left. It's gonna help build up that conditioning for your shoulders, it's gonna make you breathe, and also from coming from the heavy bag to the hanging bag, which is a lighter work, you're going to be able to let those muscles recover in terms of the short-term energy you've used for the power shots. So then when you go back to the heavy bag from this bag, you're gonna be able to reintroduce that power and build yourself up over time. So remember, light heavy bag, constantly just moving. Every time the bag swings back at you, throw a jab out, just keep it moving. Think about rotation and distance on the bag. That's what's gonna be important here. Hands up, make those shoulders work, constantly moving, punch outs. These are all little things that you can utilize. Just keep yourself moving. This one is gonna be a mental game. So if you catch yourself planting and not throwing, Get in the habit of saying in your head, move, move, move. Now we've covered the bag working, just the basics. Obviously, if there's anything I've missed there, let me know in the comments section. I'll make sure to cover it in another video. So for this point, we've covered enough of the boxing. It's just time to show you what I've talked about and put it to work.
I don't want to sit down. It's a mental thing. You stand up when you don't want to, you walk when you don't want to. So you, you condition yourself to not be weak minded, not to sit, always be moving. So we get used to that feeling of tired and being ready to go again. Whew. That's eight three minute rounds done, 30 seconds rest. I used to do three minutes, one minute rest. So I'm making it work harder. I put the rounds up first, took it to eight rounds, then I brought that rest time down. One thing I do want to say that I didn't cover before was a little bit on body posture. And this is a personal one to me. What I'm always doing is I'm keeping my elbows tucked in and I'm concentrating on keeping a flat stomach by engaging my glutes as I move. So as I'm moving, I'm thinking about my core and glutes all the time and throwing with rotation from the core but with activated abs and glutes. So a little hint there if you do have a, a lazy arch in that back. Uh, so about three minutes after finishing, yeah? Yep. Something like that. Still breathing a little heavy but I'm starting to calm now. Need to gather myself, body's beginning to recoup, the burning is dissipating. And I feel like now I'm ready to go. Short term energy wise, I have no worries. I'm gonna go straight in now, I'm gonna start with the back. I'm gonna start with the compound movements, the bigger back muscle. Then I'll superset into arms. And that means I'm gonna do a bicep followed by a tricep. Now I train high volume, high frequency, which means I train everything twice a week. So I'm only gonna be doing two exercises per body group, but five sets per exercise. And that happens twice a week. So overall you end up with those four exercises that some people put into back days, arm days, etc. But you're splitting it over two days during the week. That's double the stimulation. It's half the risk of screwing your joints up and overworking the joints and aggravating any injuries. In any system, the higher frequency, constant stimulation is a better option. It reduces risk of injury and improves your gains. So if you are doing single days of back, chest, arms, whatever, split the workout in half, spread it over two days, do three body parts in one day. So now I'm feeling nice and recovered already. It's five minutes in. During the first one to three rounds of those boxing, you are gonna feel like you're dying. But trust me, you'll get a second wind if you just push through. The body is stronger than you think. It's all about that mental game. So now we're moving straight in. We're gonna be doing back seated rows, followed by a lap pull down with the horseshoe handle. And remember, I'm doing five sets. I'm doing eight to 12 rep range. Then I'm gonna move it into superset arms. And we're gonna be doing some hammer curl variations, some overhand variations, cables and dumbbells. Let's go. do the bigger body part, that compound movement work on its own as a standard kind of bodybuilding style. So that's set, rest, set, rest, moving from one exercise to completion to another exercise to completion. But now we're going to change that up, moving to smaller muscle groups on the arms, the biceps and the triceps. So here I'm going to superset, moving from one muscle group to another on opposite sides of the arm. While one is working, the other is resting. So there's no excuse for long rest times here. I'm trying to improve my cardio, I'm trying to improve my fitness. I also don't want to be in the gym for hours at a time. So coming in now doing the supersets also helps compact that workout time. So I'm going to be looking to do a bicep exercise followed straight away by a tricep exercise. Five sets, eight to 12 reps, focusing on isolation, no excessive movement, squeezing, light to medium weight. Let's work. So there we go in whilst the gym is shutting so we killed that plus recording plus explanations in around about an hour and a half i would aim to do that entire workout in hour 15 minutes that would be my goal with those supersets helping bring that time down i hope this has kind of broken it down a little bit for you this is as, as simple as i can make it without making this video too long so if there are any specifics you want me to go into let me know in the comment section below in fact if you've made it this far into the video 
in the comment section below, give me a skadoosh and let me know you made it this far. We will cover any other questions that you've got in there. I'll do my best to answer everything in the comments section. Guys, if you have any hints or tips, if you're, if you're a boxer and you've been doing it for years and there's little things that you can help with, like one of you guys commented before when I was doing the bag work to tuck the elbows in and I've actually been mentally doing that and it does feel way better. Remember to always think about that posture through the boxing, making that core work, rotations, making sure to not slap through your punches, slow things down, steady away, work on technique, bring that power in only when you feel it's nice and fluid, don't try and rush these things. What we're looking at here is work ethic and just pushing the boundaries. In terms of the weights, we've seen what we got through, everything was five sets, eight to 12 reps, and on the supersets we were moving, minimum rest, minimum rest for everything. We're trying to push, we're trying to be athletic, we're trying to be fitter, we're trying to be better. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, make sure to comment, like, and share as always. Hit that notification bell if you haven't already. I've been Lex, this has been Beyond Bodybuilding. Let's call it that, Beyond Bodybuilding. I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, Lex and Jay, we out.